Agatha Christie The ABC Murders is an adventure game with point and click elements which first came out in 2016 on other consoles. Based on the Agatha Christie novel which was published in 1936 and starring her famous character Hercule Poirot, does the game stand up to close investigation? I'm Glenn Bolger, thank you to the publishers for the review code and now let's find out. You fancy yourself, don't you, at solving mystery? Hercule Poirot receives a letter signed ABC detailing a crime that is soon to be committed, going so far as to give the date. When it subsequently transpires that a murder occurs on this date, and with an ABC rail guide having been left at the scene, it becomes apparent that there is a serial killer on the loose who is taunting Poirot with his actions. Gameplay-wise, the ABC Murders is an adventure game with point-and-click elements. You take on the role of Poirot, travel into crime scenes in order to find clues and begin to piece things together in an attempt to solve the case. The events of each chapter will see you taken to a number of settings, the main one being the scene of the crime. Here you must investigate the area, searching for information that will allow Poirot to make certain deductions that advance the story. You do not find clues in the popular sense, it's not about trails of footprints or blood-soaked murder weapons, it's more about observing the finer details of the surroundings to then begin to piece together a reconstruction of events, which whilst I'm no expert in the character of Poirot, I'm led to believe is very true to the character. In fact, you can even earn ego points by acting as Poirot would in certain situations. Finding these clues or making particular observations will allow Poirot to use his little grey cells, another staple of the books, and this is basically where he internalises the information he has, linking it together in order to deduce what has happened. This is a feature I have seen in similar games such as those based around Sherlock Holmes and it's a good way of getting the player to take stock of what has happened. It does perhaps feel a little linear and arbitrary, not really leaving much room to make an incorrect deduction, but I liked its inclusion nonetheless. As well as this you will find certain objects or items at crime scenes which will initiate a puzzle sequence when they are interacted with. Early examples include a puzzle box which must be opened to gain the contents inside or comparing letters sent from a potential perpetrator. Others will see you having to be vigilant as a code to open a secret compartment or a padlock is hidden somewhere in the surroundings. These are sprinkled into the gameplay at fairly regular intervals and helped to change the gameplay up. Observations are another part of the gameplay and are vital to the investigations. They take two forms. Firstly, you will be surveying a scene in order to gather key points, the number needed being displayed on the screen, but you can also observe the people you interact with, giving Poirot an idea of the mindset, personality or current circumstances of that person. Knowing this information may well give you an edge when you decide how to question them. Playing to their ego or ideologies may loosen their tongue a little, for example. I mentioned reconstructions briefly earlier and these will generally be unlocked once you have gathered enough information at a scene and will basically see you piece together everything you have learned, showing that you have been paying attention by pressing the correct buttons when prompted. These can be watched again from the main menu once unlocked and completing them will end a chapter and see you move on. I'm going to say now that I do really enjoy these sort of games and find them the perfect sort of games to play with my wife. And whilst this has a lot of gameplay elements that make such games ideal to play with a partner, there were a few niggles that I need to highlight. First, things are a little too linear at times. The game guides you towards the right answers which I did appreciate in one respect as some games of this nature will have you completely floundered as you fail to click on one tiny pixel hidden on the screen somewhere or they use crazy leaps of logic and whilst I applaud a lack of that here I wanted to be able to do a bit more investigating without the cursor making it obvious exactly where I needed to go next. On the flip side of this, some of the puzzles are incredibly finicky. I liked the level of challenge they provided, but navigating the various screens and clicking the correct parts was at times quite frustrating. It's also impossible to really fail at the game. Even if you do get something wrong, you will be told immediately and can then just retry. Control wise, you will control your character with the left stick, moving around the scene to find what you need. This is okay, although Poirot does turn like an oil tanker, and whilst I wasn't expecting the old boy to be the most sprightly of protagonists, they could have put a little more spring in his step. The right stick controls your cursor, and hovering it over something of interest will see a button prompt flash up on screen. Your menu is brought up by pressing down on the D-pad and you can find your little grey cells questions here as well as your notebook which contains details of any character encounters you've had and a list of your objectives and next steps. You will be finding items at times although it won't be the inventory full of all sorts of tat that some point and click games have you collecting, this game keeping it more concise with things like keys to open doors. When an item is needed you pull up the aforementioned menu and any that you currently possess will be shown in the bottom corner. Using items is again quite a fiddly process, especially if you are using them in conjunction with one of the puzzles that I mentioned earlier. This part of the game could definitely have been streamlined. 
Gameplay is a good combination of logical deduction and puzzle solving that makes clever use of its source material. Things are a bit too linear at times, which is unfortunate, but gameplay including story scores 17 out of 20. Controls work well enough, but a fiddly item system and a few other awkward moments spoil things to an extent and they score 13 out of 20. When it comes to the visuals, Agatha Christie The ABC Murders uses a very aesthetically pleasing style. It has a hand-drawn look with very bold black outlines, most noticeable in the cutscenes and close-up interactions between characters. This is reminiscent of the style found in games such as the Batman series from Telltale. The environments and settings are all well crafted and make a good use of colour that almost defies the 1930s London setting, while still allowing for a level of realism. It's very similar to games such as Broken Sword in this respect. Sometimes characters' limbs can look a little out of proportion to the rest of their body, particularly during cutscenes, but on the whole, the style does work well. Performance-wise, the game runs well enough, although it does suffer from minor stuttering when the game auto-saves, and there were also a few odd visual glitches here and there. When playing in handheld mode, the image is still quite crisp, certainly comparable to the docked image, but it does seem slightly choppy, not running quite as smooth as its docked counterpart. In terms of the audio and starting with the voice acting, if I had to sum it up in one word, it would probably be spurious. Poirot himself is one of the stronger performers, having his famous accent owing to his Belgian heritage and using particular French phrases interspersed with his second language of English. Friend and confidant Hastings also comes across well and is one of the better aspects. The actor that portrays Inspector Jap doesn't fare as well unfortunately, coming across as incredibly wooden and his delivery is unintentionally comical at times. So it's an alphabet fiend. I'm going to have a list drawn up of all the people whose name starts with B. I hope there aren't too many of them. The rest of the support staff fall somewhere in between. The music, however, is all appropriate for the time period and does suit the on-screen action well. Visuals have a pleasing style to them and bar a couple of odd glitches, work very well and score 15 out of 20. Audio is suitable, although some wooden voice acting does break the immersion and it scores 13 out of 20. Agatha Christie The ABC Murders costs £35.99. €39.99, €29.99 or 59 Australian dollars 99 and it will take up 1.4 gigabytes of your system storage. The story consists of four chapters and will take most people around seven to eight hours to complete. Now this is the package's major downfall. Not the length of the game, it's well paced and probably would have outstayed its welcome had it been much longer, but the price being asked for the amount of content on offer has been quite badly misjudged. It's a shame because it will affect the score and I did enjoy the game, but it is what it is. Plus the exchange rate between regions is just plain crazy. There is a physical version available and waiting for this to drop in price might be the way to go here. It's a case of a decent game being soured by an unrealistic asking price and value scores 8 out of 20. To conclude, Agatha Christie The ABC Murders is a fun adventure game with a few taxing puzzles and a good narrative that uses its source material very well. It uses point and click elements but streamlines the process of picking up every little clue with it being more about observing the scene and making deductions. You are led along a little too much at times plus some of the control schemes are a bit awkward but the game's biggest downfall is nothing to do with the actual game itself it's the price being placed upon it. Had it been priced a little more sensibly this would have got 70 odd percent instead so if you are a fan of such games wait for a sale or wait for that physical version to drop in price. It's here, Poirot. The murder took place in this street. Grim place indeed. Tout à fait, Hastings. The streets of Andover are in a... Agatha Christie, The ABC Murders, gets a switch-up score of 66%. Thank you, everybody, for watching this review. Please do remember to leave a like if you like what you've just seen. A quick thank you to our Patreons, as always, for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe, and until next time, happy gaming. Some post for you, Poirot. Mr. Hercule Poirot, you fancy yourself, don't you, at solving mysteries that are too difficult for our poor thick-head British police? Let us see, Mr. Clever Poirot, just how clever you can be. Perhaps you'll find this nut too hard to crack. Look out for Endover on the 21st of the month. Yours extra, A, B, C. Oh, it's some sort of joke. Maybe. But please remind me to inform Chief Inspector Jap.